going on guys uh it's gonna make a little bit longer form video uh what i'm about to show you i decided to try to shorten things up a little bit uh just for the sake of time and interest uh, i will throw this out there though if you guys want to see a little bit more in-depth you know overview of what i'm doing how i'm hooking this up and just the different things you need to think of if you're doing this for yourself uh what the heck that was uh, i'll make a separate video and go into more detail uh, for those that are interested just comment below let me know uh, but i'm uh, upgrading the machine a little bit i'm very excited i'm finally getting around to adding a fourth axis uh, or a rotary axis to my cnc router uh, and honestly this is something i really never thought i'd ever quite have a need or a want for uh, kind of wrote it off in the back of my head as kind of a niche tool or accessory uh, that really only like woodworkers or like a certain section of the you know the CNC routing community uh, had need for people making like table legs or baseball bats I don't know uh, I guess I always figured if I needed something round and machined I'd just check it into my lathe uh, and kind of manually do it or figure out some other way uh, and I guess it just never really came up as a need uh, until just recently here, uh, I got a little bit of a bug up my butt about a specific project uh, that I decided all of a sudden I wanted to do. Uh, and I got to thinking, you know, how could I do that well and precisely and come up with a good end product that I'd be proud of? Uh, and it just kind of hit me out of nowhere. Uh, CNC fourth axis would be just about perfect for that uh, axis. Uh, did I say axis? Uh, now, I'm not going to quite reveal what that project is just yet. I think I want to get this actually rolling, get some test pieces out uh, before I kind of start getting into the nitty gritty on that. Uh, so consider that a little bit of a teaser, I guess, or, uh, you know, something's coming, but uh, yeah, it just kind of hit me, you know, fourth axis, that's like almost the perfect solution for what I'm wanting to do. Uh, and even the more I thought about it, the more I started realizing, you know, that would actually cover a number of projects I've thought about wanting to do in the past uh, and just didn't have the tooling or the time or capabilities for. Uh, and I started wondering why I ever kind of wrote this off to begin with and even kicking myself a little bit for not already investing in one and learning how to use it and getting it set up and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I think this is going to be a very useful and well-used tool uh, in my arsenal once I get it going. So uh, let me just show you. Uh, now, there's a number of different ways guys hook these up. Uh, if you have a CNC router, uh, a lot of guys will just take one of their existing axis motors or drivers uh, and hook it up to this. Uh, because when you are using this, uh, just to give you some background, uh, Gantry style CNC router basically has three axes, uh, X, Y, Z. Uh, though technically they normally have four. Uh, you've got X, Y, Z, and A. Uh, y and A are normally slaved together. Uh, just to show you on this guy, uh, you've got basically a Z axis, which is your up and down. You've got X, which is left and right. Uh, and then this whole assembly, this whole gantry moves back and forth, basically with two motors. Uh, that's, you know, Y on one side, A on the other. Uh, and when you're using a rotary, you know, this doesn't move. This just rotates. It clamps in a fixed position. Uh, so you really only need to set your gantry over the top of it, and then you only need X to run the length of, you know, whatever you're cutting, uh, and then Z to go in and out of what you're cutting. And then the rotation takes care of the rest. Uh, so you're really back once again to three axes uh, and even minus one, you know, minus a motor. Uh, so what a lot of guys will do, they'll make a new profile in their control software. Uh, then they'll basically eliminate the Y axis because you're really, once you set it, you can open your new profile and get out of the old one. Uh, and then you only need X, Z, and A. Uh, so you can use either one of those motors or drivers uh, to basically run your rotary. Uh, so a lot of guys will have a plug, you know, that you can disconnect from one of those motors, basically run straight from the driver. Uh, and then you plug that into the rotary and that's your new A axis. And uh, I probably made it sound more complicated than it is, but that's what I was originally gonna do. Uh, so I actually ended up, you know, setting up a connector here. These are some Deutsch DT connectors. 
Uh, they're kind of like an automotive style, uh, waterproof, dustproof connector. Uh, they got four pins. Uh, you can get different pin configurations, but these had four. Uh, there's other types of connectors you can use uh, that would probably work just as well. Uh, but those are pretty robust, relatively cheap, and relatively easy uh, you know, to install and customize. So uh, I've actually got another video. It's about half hour long, a little on the long-winded side. Uh, but I show you start to finish from stripping to crimping to, you know, assembly and connection. Uh, along with some tips and tricks that I haven't seen on too many other tutorials uh, on how to kind of do that, you know, an easy way uh, and a right way. Uh, as far as I know, anyway. And, uh, yeah, maybe I'll be uploading that at some point after this one or along with this one as well. But uh, all that to say, you know, I originally, that's how I was going to hook it up, you know, borrowing an existing axis. Uh, but then I got to thinking, you know, after wiring it up, you know, I'm using much larger motors and drivers to run my normal machine. Uh, this is a NEMA 23. Normally I'm on a NEMA 24 with higher output drivers, higher amps. Uh, I didn't want to risk burning this motor up. Uh, so I ultimately bought a dedicated driver for a NEMA 23. It was only 20 bucks. Uh, easy to hook up. I had spare room on my breakout board. It's a six axis board. Again, I'm only using four. So I've got two spare axes, quite a number of extra pins uh, to play with. Uh, already had the wiring, even had a empty cable gland on my control box that I could run the wire into. Uh, and so that's ultimately what I ended up doing. Just ran it under the table, we're plugged in. Uh, now on this guy, this comes with some pretty thin gauge, it's like 18 or 16 gauge wire, probably 18. And uh, since these are larger connectors, they don't crimp as easily on the lower or smaller gauge wire. Uh, so I did solder and heat shrink some larger conductors onto that uh, and then crimp that onto those connectors. And uh, I got that set up now uh, and I've set up my hotkeys. So if I go to the run screen, I can hit forward or backwards. Uh, now actually towards me is positive, but I've got the down arrow to run towards me, up to run it away. It's more intuitive that way. Uh, but if I go to MDI, zero my axis, I can input G00 A360, and that'll run this in 360 degrees. And again, if you guys need more detail on this, I can make a video where I can refer to like Mark Lindsay's channel or similar. Uh, or if I go to go back to A0, that'll go the opposite direction. Uh, you got to set it up for angular, uh, the steps and all that's a little bit different math. But, you know, ultimately, once I kind of got back into it, I, things kind of started clicking. And the hardest part of this was just remembering, you know, how to set up a new profile ports and pins and configuration and all that and uh you know finally got that figured out thanks to some youtube and google but uh yeah that's that it's uh set up it's ready to uh, hopefully secure to the spoil board here uh get lined up a little bit uh actually you know that's going to be its own separate thing maybe i'll make a video after it's all set up how i do that uh, I've got some ideas for kind of helping to line it up. Uh, some guys will make a separate base uh, with some T-Track and everything. Uh, I don't know if I quite have the clearances for that right now. Uh, I might have to notch out some of my spoil board and my table, make a dedicated spot that I can install or remove if I need to. But uh, we'll get that in there. Uh, I am going to have to subscribe uh, or re-up my subscription to Fusion 360 month to month. Uh, to get fourth access capability. That is something they don't offer to the free hobby version anymore. Uh, and, you know, truth be told, you know, I'm not really at the threshold or at least what used to be the threshold of like the yearly revenue uh, to really be like a pay to play kind of account. Not that I haven't subscribed for several months in the past. I mean, I've spent hundreds and hundreds of dollars on Fusion 360, but, you know, once. I kind of got onto it and, you know, made some models and drawings and cam tool pass and all that. 
you know, once you have them, you kind of have them. And I kind of let the subscription lapse as I wasn't really, you know, using it as much as I was. Uh, well, now in order to do this, I am going to have to re-up. And uh, if you guys want to hear my thoughts on that, you know, on kind of pay-to-play or subscription-based software, specifically Fusion 360, I suppose I can do another video on that. Comment below and, you know, I'll do a little bit of ranting. Although I've actually matured on the subject quite a bit. <laughs> Uh, whereas I used to be quite put off and irritated about it, uh, I've actually kind of changed my tune. Uh, so if you guys want to hear the th my thoughts on that, let me know. I'll, I'll make a separate video. Uh, you might or might not find it interesting. Uh, but I, I definitely have some opinions. I have some thoughts. Uh, as well as possibly a way, I think, Autodesk, you know, as a company, or Fusion 360 as that section of company, uh, I've honestly got some ideas I think I could triple if not quadruple uh, their income pretty easily uh, if they'd want to hear me out now I'd be all ears to have a discussion as to why it wouldn't work <laughs> uh, but I do have some ideas if you guys want to hear that let me know or if you're an Autodesk employee uh, and you want to make a good impression uh, comment below I'll make a separate video I've got some ideas <clears throat> they're not too crazy and revolutionary but uh, I'm not gonna waste more bandwidth on this video uh, talking about it but uh yeah let me know uh i think we're gonna wrap this one up here though just kind of showing you the preliminary uh setups here uh like i said i still got to mount it and kind of learn a few ins and outs of it uh, but i'm excited uh, and actually along with this upgrade i've got another upgrade coming too that you guys might be interested in i know i am uh just to let the cat out of its bag i'm going to be putting on an automatic tool changer I uh, hope to actually get the last of the pieces, maybe tomorrow. I think the spindle's coming, uh, if not sometime early this week. Uh, I'll be getting that, and I should have everything else already I've ordered and received. Uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, and by the way, if you want another video even besides, <laughs> uh, trust me, I've got plenty of opinions. Uh, I can talk you in or out of uh, whether or not you should use AliExpress or other overseas suppliers and uh you know commerce sites uh, i've got plenty of uh thoughts and opinions on that uh, which may not be what you think they are and uh, you may sway one way or the other uh, after listening uh, to some thoughts or you know maybe i've i'd just ramble on and not make any sense i don't know but comment below if you want that video <laughs> so uh anyway uh i hope you guys enjoyed this one i uh, hope you're looking forward to seeing uh as much as i am looking forward to seeing you know, some new products uh, from Riley Knife and Tool. Uh, this, you know, being a key feature for one project in particular, uh, and even a few more down the road, I've got some ideas already uh, that I'm really excited about. Uh, and if anything, I'm excited to learn a new skill, a new process, uh, or just a new way of thinking about machining and fabricating, you know, that this is gonna open me up to. Uh, and maybe I'll do some more videos on that, you know, as I get more comfortable, so. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about that, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Again, if you need more details on kind of how to wire one of these up, if maybe for your own machine, uh, I can kind of show you some tips and tricks of how I did mine, but, you know, that'll be its own video. So uh, let me know, and again, comment below if you want to hear about any of the other stuff I yammered on about, but not really. Uh, and as always, I thank you guys for watching, for sticking with me, uh, and for the support. And uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.